get ready for the morning rush. A uh, quick wrap of your news and weather. We'll start with Kristen Curry. Again, morning. We'll start with our next big weather maker. It's a storm scraping the far southern half of the state. You'll notice we got a lot of cloud cover and even the possibility of a few spot showers late today and into the overnight hours. Albuquerque, nothing but sunshine. Those of you over northern New Mexico, you're not even going to notice this storm scraping to the south. All of it's going to be south of I-40. We'll continue to watch those spot showers again tomorrow and into Friday. This morning, we now know who will be the next president of the United States. Here is where the electoral count stands as you wake up today. Donald Trump, the projected winner, 276 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 218. And this morning, Hillary Clinton, though, is up in the popular vote, and it's projected to stay that way. That means more voters wanted Clinton to be the next commander in chief. So many are now wondering then why is Donald Trump elected president? That's because we use the Electoral College where each state is assigned a number of electoral votes. That's based on which states the candidate wins. Whoever receives 270 electoral votes is elected president. If Clinton holds up the popular vote and loses, she would be only the fifth candidate in U.S. history. The same thing happened when President George W. Bush was elected president, but Al Gore won the popular vote. Now, when it comes to that vote, the presidential vote here in our state in New Mexico, Hillary Clinton did come out on top in that on our state's presidential race about an hour after the polls closed. Take a look at those numbers there. Hillary Clinton at 48 percent, Donald Trump at 40 in New Mexico. Mexico, Gary Johnson at nine. And we do have team coverage breaking down key races. We start with Catherine Mazzone. State Senate Democrats will soon have a new leader. This after a new face beats out a longtime senator. Democrats held on to their Senate majority and took the House, but Republicans still had a big win. Experts say with the help of the governor's guru, Jay McCleskey, and his PAC, they ousted Majority Leader Michael Sanchez. You likely saw the slew of negative ads against him. PACs didn't have to limit spending because of the Citizens United decision. Experts say legislators on both sides of the aisle spent half a million this election cycle. They add the Senate will likely see an even more liberal leader with Sanchez gone. Adam? Here's a look at some of the major state House races. We'll begin with Republican Sarah Maestas Barnes, who will likely beat out Democrat on a Romero by six points for State House District 15. And we do have a tight one for District 23. It shows a 50 50 split here. Democrat Damon Eli edges out Republican Paul Pacheco by just 72 votes. Since that was decided by less than 100 votes, there will be an automatic revote, recount rather, in this. And the District 36 unofficial results, Democratic uh, Democrat Nathan Small may take a seat from incumbent Republican Andy Nunez. Uh, Nathan Small currently leading there in the vote totals, the unofficial vote totals, 57% to Nunez's 43%. As Maggie Tulos Oliver prepares to take office as Secretary of State, the first item she plans to work on is bringing faith and trust back into our election system here in New Mexico. She says she plans on doing this by bringing much needed reform to the broken election system and campaign finance regulations, and will do this by supporting a nonpartisan ethics commission bill. Toulouse Oliver beat her opponent, Nora Espinoza, by a fairly large margin. She will have to run again for Secretary of State in two years. Fernanda? The only constitutional amendment on this year's ballot passes with 87% of the vote. It changes the way bond works in New Mexico. It will allow judges on rare occasions to hold the most dangerous criminals without bond, keeping them off the streets. On the flip side, the amendment will also allow judges to release nonviolent defendants who don't pose a flight risk if the only reason they're being held is because they can't afford to get out. Kristen? Today's Metro Threat Index out of zero. Nothing to worry about weather wise. We have cool temperatures, but a good amount of sunshine. Even our winds look to say less than 10 miles per hour. So enjoy, enjoy the nice weather while we have it. We could be looking at big changes by next week. Adam. America's, America's toughest sheriff known for his harsh crackdown on immigration in Arizona will not be serving a seventh term. Democrat Paul Pinzone won the rematch against Joe Arpaio after losing his, to him four years ago. Analysts are crediting the Latino vote. Arpaio faces a criminal contempt trial over allegations he ignored court orders to stop his deputies from racial profiling. And soon more states will allow people to smoke marijuana without a medical card. California, Nevada, Maine, and Massachusetts are the latest states to have joined four other states and the District of Columbia to make recreational marijuana legal. Only medical marijuana is legal in New Mexico. Pot is still illegal, though, under federal law. However, state laws have relaxed over the years. 
Libertarian Party will now be looking for a new presidential candidate for 2020. Gary Johnson says he will not make a run for the nation's highest office next time. As of this morning, the pair has walked away. She saw in the numbers a little bit earlier with 9% of the vote in New Mexico. Our political experts say that is enough for the Libertarian Party to be declared a major party in New Mexico. Coming up for a check on that morning drive. Here's some good news as you start your Wednesday morning. No major tie ups there on the interstates. As you can see, traffic building a little volume on Paseo right by I 25. That's to be expected this time of the morning. The Canadian government's immigration website crashed overnight. Experts believe the U.S. election played a major role in this. Business Insider reports the site went down around 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and access has been spotty ever since. Online searches regarding moving to Canada and becoming a Canadian citizen grew in recent months, particularly after Donald Trump won the Republican presidential nomination. The race is certainly trending this morning online. People have a lot to say about Trump becoming uh, the next president. On Twitter, supporters use the hashtag drain the swamp, referring to Trump's promise to clean up lobbying in politics. Meanwhile, people were also upset using the hashtag he's not my president. All right, time now for the five facts. We start with number five, freeze. The UNM Spirit Group is getting in on the bandwagon with a nationwide trend called the Mannequin Challenge. It has people freezing still for an extended period of time, mannequin style. Even Lobo Louie and Lobo Lucy gave it a try. They look pretty good. They huh? do. They I do a like great job. It. That's a challenge for mm -hmm. sure. At number four, a cold start to our morning in the 30s and 40s nearly statewide by noontime, talking 50s and eventually getting to the low 60s here in the metro area, a little above average for this time of year. We'll see a good amount of sunshine over the state. The only exception, the southeastern plains where we do have just a slight chance of a few spot showers. And number three, voters sending a decisive message to Albuquerque city leaders this morning saying they want a vote on the controversial Albuquerque Rapid Transit Project. An advisory question to county vo voters passed with 76%. When News 13 asked what they would do if the votes played out this way, the city said nothing. They say construction on the project has already started. On to number two now. When lawmakers return to the roundhouse next session, Democrats will control the House and the Senate. Bitter election battles in key swing districts took out several House Republican incumbents. Dems also picked up a couple seats in the Senate. Experts say legislators will now have to reach across the aisle to create meaningful policy. Number one, Donald Trump supporters are celebrating an historic victory this morning. The billionaire businessman jumped over the necessary 270 electoral votes just after midnight to be elected the nation's 45th president. The big question this morning is what's next? Trump made big promises when visiting New Mexico from fixing the economy by adding jobs to building that border wall. News 13 political expert Gabe Sanchez says if Trump keeps that promise, it could damage foreign relations between New Mexico and Mexico. During his victory speech, Trump vowed to unify a deeply divided nation and promised to improve the economy. He also said the nation owes Hillary Clinton a debt of gratitude. By the way, she is expected to address staff and supporters at 7.30 our time. We're going to carry that when it happens both on air on KRQ this morning and on our website. A lot more coming up in our next show coming up on Fox New Mexico. We'll see you on the other side.